Hello and welcome back to another day of Advent of Code. Today is day 17. And the problem for day 17 is a little bit tricky. Uh, there is a clever solution to this. Uh, I did the clever solution for part one while solving it. It took way too long. Uh, so I'm just going to show you the brute force solution, which is fast enough to solve this problem anyway. Uh, so the problem says that you are shooting at a target. You start at the position 0, 0, and you have some initial velocity, which is not given. And each tick, you are going to add your x velocity and y velocity to both of your positions. And then you adjust your x velocity towards 0 by 1 with drag. And y velocity uh, decreases by 1 due to gravity. And this is just kind of the rules of this system. So part one asks, what is the highest y you can reach? And they give you an example for the input problem, which is this one here. Uh, this is the highest it can go, and the initial velocity is 6 and 9. And uh, so when brute forcing this, the thing you want to ask yourself is what the bounds will be. And I noticed a few things about this problem. So first off, whatever, if, uh, first off, these are always negative y in the inputs. So you can kind of hand wave away any positive y's. Uh, you can also hand wave away any negative x's. So this will always be negative y and positive x. And some of that, <laughs> some of that factors into the assumptions we're going to make about how these things get shot and move. Okay, the next thing that I noticed is if you have a, an initial positive velocity, uh, when it, it will eventually reach zero again, and it will have that negative velocity plus one. So you see we started with a positive velocity of one, two, three here, and at this position here we had a negative velocity of one, two, three, four. Um, cool. And so the next thing that I noticed is to get to the highest, we would have to have a negative velocity, we would have to have an x velocity that fits us into this box here, uh, and we would have to have a negative velocity that's going to land on the last square of whatever this box is here. So it would have to go from one step from zero to the negative thing there. And from there, you can use some clever math to figure that out. Um, but that's what I did for part one. I'm not going to show you that clever math because I don't think that inch, that uh, solution is easy to explain. Uh, the other thing that I noticed is if you have a, veloc a positive velocity, uh, you're going to take twice as many seconds to get back to a zero velocity. So a positive velocity of three took one, two, three to reach the top, and then four, five, six, seven to get to here. And then um, you could imagine it would take eight seconds to get to here for the, uh, or the, you know, one more second to get to the bottom of here, depending on your maximum thing there. So that helps you bound T by two times the highest thing that you can do. Uh, you know the you know this velocity directly because it is it is uh, zero minus the bottom here minus one because we're going to have a negative velocity of our initial velocity minus one in the negative direction. So like initial velocity of three, this is this has a velocity of negative four, and we want to target the bottom line of this square here. So we know we know our initial velocity. This is easy to compute, um, and you could have also just figured this out from the problem. So you can see like. Uh, negative 10 is the bottom. Oh, okay, intuitively, I need the positive value minus 1. Um, and since that tells you kind of the bounds of your y velocity, that also tells us the bounds of the time, uh, because this this arc here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, which is going to be, well, in the case of 9, it's going to be, uh, you know, three three ticks up, 4 ticks down. It's going to be 9 ticks up, 10 ticks down, plus one more, uh, so it's going to be 2n plus, two, 2 times 10 plus 1 is our, our maximum ticks there. And from that, we can kind of figure out the bounds of what our values are and start just simulating every single one of those. Uh, but before you do that, we have to parse our input. Let's do that really quickly. Uh, I did kind of a sloppy parsing for mine. <laughs> uh, I'll kind of reproduce that here. Uh, basically chopping off these characters and this character. Unfortunately, the Y one is not symmetric, which is a little bit annoying there. Oops, just making sure that Discord was muted. <laughs> That's supposed to be off screen, my bad. Um, 
Okay, so that chops off those characters. Then we need to split it. X1, S, X2, S equals X, S dot split on dot dot. Y1, S, Y2, S equals Y, S dot split on dot dot. And then X1, X2, X3, Y1. Uh, parse those out. Let me just make sure that we got those correctly. Two and. Okay, so we've parsed those properly. All right, so now let's do our simulation. So for our, let's do our Y velocities first. For Y in range, uh, we know that the, also we know, <laughs> we actually have to think about another Y velocity here. So uh, we could just reach this directly in one, in one go. So just one tick that takes us to here. And in that case, it will be bound by the negative velocity, which is gonna be our negative big value here. So that goes from y1, and we know our max velocity is going to be the absolute value of y1 uh, minus 1. Since it's a range, we can just do this. Uh, for our x velocities, uh, I couldn't think, I couldn't, well, there is a smart lower bound, but we don't have to be super smart here. We can just say the lower bound is 1, even though 1 is never going to work. Uh, and our upper bound is reaching this exactly, this position exactly in one go. And so our max x is going to be this large value here, so x2 plus 1. Then we want to simulate this, so we'll do v x v y equals x y, making a copy of these so we don't mutate the values here. <laughs> I spent way too long mutating this outer value and wasting a whole bunch of time. Uh, for t in range, we know the max bounds of our t because it is two times, oops, it is two times the absolute value of our y. Uh, plus one, so plus two here. And we can basically just do our computation here. So we can do uh, xp equals yp equals zero. And uh, we want to compute, part one is to compute the highest it gets. We're gonna have our max y is going to be zero here. We're gonna independently compute the max y for this particular path max y path equals zero, and then we can just do xp plus equals vx, uh, yp plus equals vy, and then we want to adjust the velocities, decrease by one to zero, the max of vx minus one and zero, and vy we can just do minus equals one. We want to compute the math, uh, the max, so max y path equals max, max y path and yp. And we want to check if it has hit or not. So the hit condition is x1 is less than or equal to xp less than or equal to x2, and y1 is less than to less than or equal to yp is less than or equal to y2. We know we have done a hit here, uh, so we can update this outer max value max y equals max max y max yp, and we can break. We can also do a little bit of an optimization here. If we have gone past this edge here in the x direction or past the bottom of here in the y direction, uh, we can break out a little bit earlier. So if we say xp is greater than x2 or yp is less than y1, then we can also break out early as well. And that should get us part one, arg. <laughs> Part one, max y, assuming I didn't make typos. Um, max y p, oh, it's max y path. Yep, cool, so that's part one. Oh, we have a story print up here. Okay, so that's part one. Uh, we just simulated everything, and this is fast enough for the sample inputs. Part two is how many unique initial velocities can hit. And so in this one, fortunately we've written all the code to find the cases when it hits. Uh, so we just need to have a count here and then we can do count plus equals one and that'll get us part two really easily. And if we run that, we get 112, which is exactly what we expect here. Anyway, that's day 17. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is not how I approached it for part one, but I did approach it this way for part two. Uh, let me just show you really quickly my part one solution. 
ASC to a 17 one. So <laughs> this is the kind of mathy way to figure out the velocities. And I figured this out by doing a little, little bit of algebra. Um, yeah, this is the, the, <laughs> the shortcut way to do this. Uh, this is actually my fastest solution from any of my days. <laughs> uh, but anyway, hopefully you found this interesting. Uh, if there, uh, well, I'll see you for the next day.